Okay, good evening, everyone. So, hi, everyone. Today is Wednesday. This is April 17th, and my name's Dana. And um, I'm a recovered Al Anon, and I am filling in for Christina. Uh, she, she lost her voice. But uh, I'm going to be leading this meeting just for tonight. So, we want to welcome everyone to our Al Anon Big Book Meeting Recovery. Al-Anon Big Book Recovery Meeting, and this is a step speaker meeting that meets every Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will study the 12 steps by using the precise instructions out of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous as they relate to us as Al-Anons. So let's get our meeting started. This is the original AA preamble written by the AA Grapevine describing the fellowship in 1940. We studied the preamble with an open mind and an open heart to consider how it applies to Al-Anon. This helps us stay focused on the message of recovery the pioneers intended while observing their traditions and action. Through the actions taken out of uh, taken based on the instructions of the basic text, we comprehend what the pioneers meant when they described the membership of AA, which is that they worked a program of recovery and they no longer drank. In our case, we no longer obsess over the alcoholic. Through continuous action and study of these principles, the understanding of the value of the original preamble reveals itself. We ask for your humble consideration of our sincere admiration of the pioneers of Alcoholics Anonymous. The simple hope is that we of Al-Anon will grow into the same clarity and unity that birthed the original 12-step fellowship, because without them, after all, none of us would be here. The original AA preamble. We are gathered here because we're faced with the fact that we are powerless over alcohol and unable to do anything about it without the help of a power greater than ourselves. We feel each person's religious views, if any, our zone affair. The simple purpose of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous is to show what may be done to the aid of a power greater than ourselves, regardless of what our individual conception of that power may be. In order to form a habit of depending upon and referring all that we do to that power, we must first apply ourselves with some diligence. By often repeating these acts, they become habitual and the help rendered becomes natural to us. We've come to know that as Alcoholics, we suffer from a serious disease for which medicine has no cure. Our condition may be the result of an allergy, which makes us different from other people. It has never been permanently cured by any treatment with which we are familiar. The only relief we have to offer is absolute abstinence, the second meaning of AA. There are no dues or fees. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. Each member squares his debt by helping others to recover. An Alcoholics Anonymous member is, is an alcoholic who, through the application of and the adherence to the AA program, has forsworn the use of any and all alcoholic beverages in any form. The moment he takes so much as one drop of beer, wine, spirits, or any other liquid containing alcohol, he automatically loses all status as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. AA is not interested in sobering up drunks who are not sincere in their desire to stay sober for all time. Not being reformers, we offer our experience only to those who want it. We have a way out on which we can absolutely agree and on which we can join in harmonious action. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our program. Those who do not recover are people who will not or simply cannot give, them, give themselves to this simple program. Now, you may like our program or you may not, but the simple fact remains that it works, and we believe it is our only chance to recover. There is a vast amount of fun included in the AA Fellowship. Some people may, might be shocked at our seemingly worldliness and levity, but just underneath there lies a deadly earnestness and a full realization that we must put first things first, and with each of us, the first thing is the solution to our alcoholic problem. To drink is to die. Faith must work 24 hours a day in and through us, or we perish. So in order uh, to set the tone for our meeting, I ask that we bow our heads, uh, in a few moments of silent prayer and meditation, and we're going to follow that with the serenity prayer. If you'd like to join me, you can press star six. Serenity prayer. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thy will, not mine, be done. 
I wish to remind you that whatever is said at this meeting expresses our own individual opinion as of today and as of up to this moment. We do not speak for AA as a whole. You are free to agree or disagree as you see fit. In fact, it is suggested that you pay no attention to anything which might not be reconciled with what is in the AA Big Book. If you don't have a Big Book, it's time you bought one. Read it. Study it. Live with it. Follow the, follow the directions in it and learn what it means to be an AA. So that's the end of the original AA preamble for which, for whom uh, Al-Anon uh, steps on the shoulders of. And um, we learned a lot from that. So um, moving forward, a sponsor is anyone who's had a psychic change as a result of working the steps and has willingness to work with others. And for those looking for a sponsor to guide them through the steps, please stay tuned and have your pens ready to record phone, num phone numbers immediately after the meeting. And each al on group ought to be a spiritual entity, having but one primary purpose, that of carrying the message to the al who still suffers. This is our primary spiritual aim. Our job as a group is to provide people with a place to learn about and work the steps. It has been our experience that working the steps consistently provides us with a better, saner life. We consider all else to be an outside issue. This includes personal problems. The proper venue for sharing such problems is with a sponsor, and this is, after all, where real recovery takes place and working the steps with a sponsor. And uh, we're just so glad that we're all here, and we're all here because we are not all there. So there will be a period of fellowship after the meeting. If you have questions, if you need a sponsor, if you need to check in or get current, or if you want to discuss other literature, please stick around for the fellowship. That's going to be a better time um, for this, for these subjects. Okay. So um, this is set speaker meeting, and I'm filling in for Christina. And so this is the third week. And so we're going over steps seven through nine. I am going to do just a brief um, a brief intro, uh, and I, I usually do that when I'm um, doing step speaker. So uh, even though we were focusing on steps one through nine, I do want to do an overview and um, of the previous steps. But I'm looking at something here really quick. Um, that would be... Um, there are a couple of things that I wanted to – okay, I cannot look at this name right now. So going over step one, and I wanted to look up this great little um, description of what we do, some of the things that we do as an Al-Anon. But step one, um, it's kind of wild that we have the same step one as an alcoholic, that we, you know, I can find that in the big book on page 58, that um, – we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. It's important for us to understand what step one is in two ways. One, I need to understand what makes uh, a person a, a, an alcoholic, and uh, that's going to tell me right there in step one um, if someone can, is, loses control um, once they begin to consume alcohol and, um, and uh, someone who um, – makes a resolution to stop drinking but cannot um, is the definition of uh, basically can't stop once you start and every time you say you're going to stop, you end up drinking more. Uh, that is technically the definition of being powerless over alcohol, um, having the physical component in our lives to become unmanageable is the um, the mind component. Now, for the family member, we will not – have that first part of uh, step one because powerless over alcohol is the body diagnosis. Um, I don't have a physical allergy as a, a family member to alcohol like my loved one does. Um, I can take it or leave it. I have a little bit and I begin to feel woozy. Um, but with my loved one, their body is abnormal when it comes to alcohol. So if I were drawing this on the board, I'd write abnormal and I'd write normal. Actually, I'd pick normal at the top. So I, when my body is normal when it comes to alcohol. My mind isn't, but my body is. So for me, if I have one drink, um, so on the board, I'd be writing number one, and then I'd write two, three, and four. And essentially, I would be – what I'm writing to you as a normal person is that all those numbers of drinks are pretty much – 
the same. Um, and then I, I begin to trail off at the end um, because, um, you know, I, I usually have – I'm satiated it too. An abnormal drinker, I would draw one that looks like the one, like the normal one, but two becomes bigger, very larger. And then three becomes larger than two, and four is huge, is larger than all the numbers. So um, it progresses. And I would, I am explaining to you what I typically write on the board to show you that the difference between my body um, and the alcoholic's body, which essentially, um, they're, when they begin to drink, um, they are, it's like they drink salt water and they're not satiated and they're going to drink until they're physically stopped or they're drunk. Um, so, um, now, why is this important? And again, this is supposed to be an overview, but um, so how does this apply to me as a family member? Well, if my, if I understand what alcoholism is, then that means that I'm going to need to step out of the way and let this person drink as much as they want and to experience consequences, all the consequences without me rescuing them. And then the real question is, well, can you do that? Can you refrain from nagging, from um, from yelling, from suggesting, from um, pushing, negotiating, bribing, um, yelling? Can you keep from doing that to let either to let this alcohol, this um, this alcoholic, do what they need to do? in their progression of their illness, even if it means that they may pass away, because many it, it can happen. That's why, and I know that's kind of, can you leave them alone, even if it might mean that they um, end up incarcerated or end up um, dead. <laughs> um, and so, you know, a lot of you listening, hey, I can't. Well, that's exactly why we needed the same program because um, we're not able to leave people that we love alone to their own consequences. Uh, so we have to have a, an entire spiritual program to be able to let people do what they need to do in their life um, with their their purpose and, and with their um, destiny, with their creator. Um, we need to... Uh, we found as some of the family members that we could not stop from getting involved in other people's destiny. We we wanted to help them. Uh, and even though our hearts were probably in a good place, you, you know, you help those that you love, ultimately we're getting in the way of um, of their destiny. And, that, and we are not the center of the universe, so it's not our place to do. So... Um, so I hope that's a brief step one um, with the alcoholic and the Al-Anon. Now, um, all we need in this program to make a beginning is hope. We don't have to have um, – I mentioned creator. I might have mentioned God. I might have, might have mentioned destiny. All we are here in, – in the book mentions the, the word God. Um, and, and, you know, you don't even have to have that language at this point to make a beginning. Because one, one of two things usually happen when we come here. When we hear if, that people talking about spiritual stuff are like, oh, no, 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 please, no, 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 I don't want to deal with that. Um, or the other side of us goes, I've got that covered. You don't even need to talk to me about it. In fact, I know more than you, and I'm going to teach you about it. So, came to believe is, it's funny because we're not questioning your belief in religion. We're questioning in your, you know, um, why, why you're here, um, how are things working out. Um, usually when we come here, we don't quite, sometimes we come here trying, trying to um, fix the alcoholic. Uh, not sometimes, most of the time. Uh, to get relief from that person that's driving us crazy and they're, and they're drinking. 
um, that we initially come here for those reasons, but um, ultimately uh, we end up following these so, same principles in order to, to get relief. So um, we don't have to have all this worked out. We just have to get some hope. And that happens when that happens from one human being to another human being. And um, I need to hurry this up. And um, came to believe is simply about having hope and a willingness to believe. And then we made a decision. Um, sorry, guys, I went a little long on that because I want to make sure we're reading the book. But anyway, when we make a decision, uh, that means we're making a decision to go through the rest of the program. And that is something that ha – this is not something that can be orchestrated because, one, is understanding that we're toast, and, two, is really a matter of getting hope and a willingness to believe that I don't quite understand everything. I don't quite understand why I'm here. I just want my loved one to stop doing X, Y, and Z. Um, but I don't quite understand everything. But this person seems pretty confident and has been where I've been and it seems to have peace. Um, maybe just maybe what's worked for her could work for me. That's all we need on, in two. And then when we ask someone to help us, um, we go to that person that seems to be, you know, pretty knowledgeable and has, has been where we've been, um, but doing better. We ask, hey, what did you do? How did you do this? Or, or you know, will you help me? Um, that in itself is a, a step three. Um, and we are going through a decision um, to do what they did, which is going to be out of this book, hopefully. <laughs> Um, there are a lot, lot of other solutions to different problems out there, but they found that, that these were the principles that helped so many alcoholic families uh, to the point that what started out as just three groups and a book has now turned into millions all over the planet. So they did something right. So maybe we want to do what they did. Um, we're going to do a searching and fearless moral inventory. And um, we get down to causes and conditions. That's really important to see. Um, and it literally is out of our head and onto paper for the purpose of um, that any kind of, any time, any business does an invent a yearly inventory. And we need to look at the things that we rethink and we replay and we redo in our mind. And all that we write out on this uh, ser uh, this searching and fearless moral means truthful. Um, this inventory, this truthful inventory that we take, we're going to share it in our fifth step, um, and that's step five. And then it's God to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. And um, that left us last week as five. We're, uh, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So when you do a fifth step, you're, you're going to learn things from a perspective that you haven't before. Um, and how do I know that? Because that's where this transition happens, this change that they talk a lot about. And they talk about it as a revolutionary change. And, in fact, there's some really great things written about this. Um, they say on page 50, it says, here are thousands of men and women, men and women, worldly indeed. They flatly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves and to take a certain attitude toward that power and to do certain simple things, there has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking. So, lo and behold, we come here and we were desperate by the actions of another human being. But then what we leave with, if you want it, is an entirely different way of thinking and living. And that part happens whether the alcoholic is drinking or not or, or whether they're in our lives or not or whether we're married to them or not. Um, it's our living and thinking that we are going to do 
get involved in here. And that's part of um, what we learn in our fifth step or some of the things, some of the ways that we're showing up. And on 51, it says, when many hundreds of people are able to say that the consciousness of the presence of God is today their most important fact in their lives, they present a powerful reason why one should have faith. And what happens, just to sum up the 12 steps, is that it, there is an element of those first three steps that is about willingness. Now, um, and, well, and from there, the willingness, you evolve in believing, and we evolve in, you know, the, in, in making a decision, and we take action. So when, even when we make that three, we make that decision, we still haven't taken actions. And that fourth step is the actual actions, and that fifth step. Um, and these actions that we continue to take are going to create results. And what are those results? It's faith. Lo and behold, all of this results in something we didn't have in the way that we were living and thinking, and that was in faith. And then someone will say, oh, no, 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 my faith is very strong. And everything but that person that's drinking. How can you say that when you condemn your loved one because you don't have faith in them, nor faith in their creator. So it's it, it can be a challenge for some of us coming here when we think that we already have that follow, that that resolved. So those are the things that we're going to learn about in our fifth step. Um, are we sure? that we um, are solely the victim in our circumstance. Are we sure about that? Have we ever considered a different perspective? No. Okay, well, if not even doing that, having even considered another perspective sounds awfully inconsiderate. (laughs) That's the thing is that many of us have these stories and we've never considered the other angle, ever. And we're not saying that you have to make it okay, especially if someone did something very harmful. Doesn't mean that if you consider their angle that all of a sudden that makes it okay what they did. No. But we're going to consider a different angle. And that's, we're just going to look at it, see what we find out. Have you ever thought about, like, um, you know, in my Alanonism, part of my defect is to point at others and what others are doing wrong as a way to make myself feel better. Anybody else done that? You just feel so bigger. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the big one in the room because I'm pointing out what you're doing in my mind, what you're doing wrong. And so um, the point in all that is, (laughs) um, is that really how we want to live? And um, is that really helpful to other people? And um, that's pretty darn selfish, isn't it? And probably not real useful because people usually pick up on that, even though we don't think so. So my point is, how about considering another, what it's like for another person? I don't like it when someone's sitting over my shoulder criticizing everything I do. I hate that. Why would someone else like it? And maybe that's why I'm doing that, being critical to others, so that they're not critical of me. So I'm going to get you before you get me. See the, these games? So let's consider what it's like to be around that. Let's consider from another angle. Because you know you feel it when someone's giving you those those cold eyes. So do I do that? These are the things. So 
I'm, I'm bringing, I'm kind of diving a little bit more into step six, which the things we learn about ourselves. And, you know, for those of us that come here thinking that we don't have anything going on with us, that, that it's all the alcoholic, we're, we're going to learn from eight. We're going to look at a different perspective um, to change our the way that we live and we think. And to change the way we live, First, we got to look at what, what our thoughts are, the things that we rethink, we replay, and and where it, where am I in that? Am I someone that likes to attach themselves to sick people, so I can be the big one in the room? Look, you're drunk again. Look, you you know you forgot to do this again. Look, you passed out again. Look, you I'm, okay? Well, what about me? Because I sure do like to focus on them. So the things that I'm going to get a different perspective, and then I can't solve that in Dana. Yeah, I, I, my confession of, of that little defect as a way to make myself feel better, well, first of all, it's like, well, what's going on with you where you don't feel better? Let's take that deeper. What's going on with you? Why, why, why do you not feel okay? Because there's only so much of somebody else's behavior before we go, you know, <laughs> wow, if this person, this person drink, this person's drinking determines how high the sun goes. And when the sun goes down, I am, there is no way I'm as faithful as I think I might be. No way. Because they're determining the rise and the fall of the sun. <clears throat> and really only God's meant to do that. Your creator. Okay, so I'm, I've learned some things. And when I say that I'm, I'm ready to have God remove all these things, it's, it's essentially admitting that I can't do those myself. And it's so wild because, you know, we go to work. Sometimes we might have demanding workplaces. I mean, mo your your work situation may be different. Most people I work, I've i worked with don't work a 12-step program. So, you know, you dive into that world. I mean, it's not, you know, we're not all, you know, doing 10 steps. Definitely not. Um, but this girl, it doesn't matter because this girl needs to, um, to keep um, from – self-destructing so they don't have to but my point is um on that that you know we might be in, in work environments it's that encourages us to be um driven and something you know go getting pushing people over and that's just not um it's a different that's not the spirit of these principles and so um we are always meant to be transparent and um step six is essentially becoming a practitioner of these principles hopefully for our entire life so i heard someone say once that um that if they die doing these principles that that or let me say that again their goal was to die doing these principles so it, it, that's the goal that's the last thing I'm doing on this planet because we know what it's like outside of, or at least I do. I'm not too good managing without a higher power. And I needed uh, willingness and believing and, um, and decisions and action and results in order to develop a, a character of faith. So. And I don't even call it faith because my mind gets all, you know, thinks of uh, other definitions. I think of just doing the next right thing and letting God handle the rest. Essentially, my friend, surprise, that's faith. Um, so we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. So step six is about being a practice. We're going to practice and practice and practice these principles. So if we're practicing these principles, it doesn't mean that we master them, and it doesn't. it's not about being perfect. 
So if I fall short, uh, it's not about whipping myself on my back. It's it's not if, it's when. Um, and so we will have a step 10, but also um, taking a personal inventory. But six is really um, practicing what we know um, about ourselves and practicing um, these principles to have um, – something greater than us, something do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And um, I hope that doesn't confuse going into step seven, which is we humbly ask him to remove our, remove our shortcomings. So um, six, we will be practitioners of these principles. I better plug in my phone. Um, and seven is asking. Um and it's actually step seven is a completion of three. So step three, you make um, it, you make a decision, and that decision, there's a prayer. Um, if you want to take a look at it, I don't know if uh, they went over it in the other ones, but uh, I do want to back up a little bit just to show you a part in the book. If you did not already know this, um, it's on page. Um, bah, 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 bah. I'll get there in just a second. Okay. Um, so on page 63, uh, we were now at step three. Many of us said to our maker as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them. May bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. There is no amen. And the theory is when we jump over, so you're you're saying casting that prayer, if casting is the right word, um, and it's going to carry you until we get to seven. And step seven tells us when ready, uh, we say something like this. My creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have now completed step seven. What a beautiful prayer. Um, first of all, when we say... Step three, we said, I'm all in. So step three was turning over our thoughts and our actions. Turning over our will and our life is turning over our thoughts and our actions because we're we know they're not reliable. But turning that over is going to carry us. And then we land on step seven. And here again, I am making a recommitment. I'm saying, you, you're going to have all of me, the good and the bad. And I'm going to have everything about me, creator, it's on you. Like you. Um, I've done my work. Now, God, it's yours. Um, isn't that a great place to be? Like I've done my inventory. I, I'm agreeing to practicing these. And the results, whatever they are, they're, it's, your, it's your deal, God. The good, the bad, the success, the, it's yours. And you know what else that means? Whether my loved one gets sober or not, it's yours. Whether, you know, I live till 80 or not, it's it's God. Whether I pay the bills or not, it's God. What part of all do you not understand? <laughs> what It's all. Here you go. Here's your results. Whether I'm healthy or I'm not, whether I'm 100, you know, 20 pounds heavier or not, it's all yours, not mine. My job's just to do the next right thing. And what is that? Uh, let's, let's read. Um, and now, boop, boop, okay. So now, we need more action. Oh, oh yeah. That's all we're, we need to worry about is the next right thing. And the people out saying, well, what's the next right thing? We need more action. 
right there, without which we find that faith without works is dead. Let's look at the steps eight and nine. We have a list of persons we have harmed and to whom we are willing to make amends. We have made it when we took inventory. We subjected ourselves to a drastic self-appraisal. Now we go out to our fellows and repair the damage done in the past. We attempt to sweep away the debris which have accumulated out of our effort to live on self-will and run the show ourselves. If we haven't the will to do this, we ask, that means prayer, remember it was agreed at the beginning. We've got any legs for victory over alcohol. Okay. So this might be alarming. By the time we get to eight, we're going to feel very differently. If you have not done the previous steps to eight, this is probably daunting. It's supposed to be because you haven't had a spiritual experience just yet. Um, or you haven't done an inventory. Uh, we're actually promised a spiritual experience when we do our first amend. But, um, but anyway, here we are. So, um, oh. So everybody on that inventory, and you don't don't alter your inventory based on what you're hearing at this point. If you have not done it, just follow your sponsor's directions. But we're gonna we're gonna list all the people in our fourth step that we're upset with, all the fears that we have, and here is why. Um, so as as your sponsor, anyone. When we get to this point, and we've just spent, you know, a couple of hours, several hours, a couple of days, I don't know, on your inventory, and then we get to this place, and you want to tell me that you have no amends to make, I am going to have to call, I'm going to have to go back to this little place and say, one, um, remember it was agreed at the beginning we would go to any length for victory over alcohol. So I know you're feeling a little bit better. And, you know, things are going great with your alcoholic, but we've made some agreements and we're not done yet. So remember that. But also the the part we want to remember is that we – our attitude is that we attempt to sweep sweep away the debris which has accumulated. So even though I am sitting here going, oh, my gosh, I haven't talked to this person in 20 years. I mean, whatever, it's fine. Accumulated. These are specific directions. We attempt. We attempt. There's a word, attempt. So people have this idea about amends is being like, okay, have this idea of what you – because we expect it from others. to We have this idea of who owes us an apology. So if we go into this going, but I'm not that other person, we need to sweep away that idea. And this is where humility comes in because we're approaching them because the book specifically tells us that we attempt – to sweep away the debris which accumulated. Okay, that was 20 years ago, but, the, but you don't know the, uh, the how it's accumulated until you approach that person. And you might be surprised if they go, I do remember when that happened. And, yeah, it, it was not cool. What? And here I just thought I didn't harm anybody because I have this idea that people who say they're sorry are guilty of everything, and and we're not admitting, like, it's not a, it is a, it's about approaching people that were harmed by us in our efforts to live on self-will and run the show ourselves. So, and and the reason I brought up a work environment is that that living in self-will and running the show ourselves may be popular with others, but it's not something we get to get to indulge in. That's why we tend to step. Um, we're not there yet, but <clears throat> that's why we attempt to clear the debris of us um, living, once again, on self-will. 
and run the show ourselves. That's a harm in itself. So when our folks think that we they haven't done anything, I take them here. You lived on self-will and we're running the show yourself. That's a harm. So let's get down and let's let's uh, work on our amends there, approaching these people that we've harmed. So, um, there are requirements they ask. Um, it is important to know, to some people, we need not, and this is on page 76, and probably should not emphasize the spiritual feature um, on our first approach. We might prejudice them. So we don't want to go to someone and go, I'm an Al-Anon, and I'm obsessively thinking, and I gossiped about you, and I just need to, we don't, we don't approach like that, um, nor with the attitude of like, oh my gosh, I was a horrible person, and now I see God, and I'm fine, I'm great. Um, we don't care. I mean, I, I mean, that's great. Um, I'm, but, People don't want to hear about that because they're used to us being all about me, myself, and I, and they really don't want the me, me, myself, and I at that moment. It's kind of like, you know, please. So um, why is this important? Um, so we're, we want to be sincere. And there are two things, two parts here to help you understand if you're being sincere or if you have a stupid motive behind it. Sorry, don't mean to call you stupid. I'm calling myself because I, oh, I've done that. Had motives and made up my own amends and didn't run them past my sponsor because I wanted to be, uh, but I just wanted to fix the situation. I was going to make an amend and not talk to her about it. Don't let this, let's not do that kind of stuff. So before you do anything, talk to your sponsor, but she's going to ask you if these two things have happened. It says, um, our real purpose is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people about us. So, one, I said this wrong. Do you have a sincere desire to set right the wrong? And two, it says we go to him in a helpful and forgiving spirit. So, uh, there is a couple from that sentence I read, a couple, uh, it's probably about 10 down, but our man is sure to be impressed with a sincere. So I'm going to ask you, is this a sincere desire to right the wrong? And are you going to this person in a helpful and forgiving spirit? Okay. If so, we can, we can do this. And um, they do say, he is going to be more interested in our demonstration of goodwill than our talk of spiritual discoveries. However, if the subject comes up we and they want to know, we talk to them about it. Because it says we don't use this as an excuse for shying away from the subject of God. So, um, Then it will serve as page 77. Then it will serve any good, uh, when it will serve any good purpose, we are willing to announce our convictions with tact and common sense. The question of how to approach the man we hated will arise. It may be that he has done more harm, harm than we have done him. And though we may have acquired a better attitude towards him, we are still not too, too keen about admitting our faults. Nevertheless, the person we dislike, we take the bit in our teeth. It is harder to go to an enemy than a friend, but we find it much more beneficial to us. We go to him in a helpful and forgiving spirit, confessing our former ill feelings and expressing our regret. Yeah. So we approach him. And so it does say we need a sincere desire and get a, a helpful, forgiving spirit, but it also says we're not going to um, – we're going to take the bit in our teeth. <laughs> so there's there's a – yes, 
So in other words, we don't we don't always like it, but we do it anyway. But we do it with sincerity. <sighs> okay. So there are a few types of different amends here. So there's the amend to the person that we hated. Then we have creditors, uh, money. Um, then we have uh, criminal offenses. Um, there is when others are involved. And um, then they go into adultery. Adultery is a uh, number admitted. Uh, okay, so then uh, they'll go into adultery. And then um, the last one is a wrong you can never fully right. So there's there's a, a few there. And that goes through, um, so I'm on page 77. Um, it, yeah, the first one was the man we hated, and they tell us how we go to him. So they give us instructions, but um, ultimately you're going to have six parts. Uh, you're going to have how we approach people we owe money to, when we've had criminal offenses, when others are involved, um, when there's adultery, and um, wrongs we can never fully right. You know, essentially, if someone is, you know, dead, they uh, tell us what we do here. So, um, okay. So, well, let's break that down. Um, we've got, I think, about 10 minutes. Okay. So, here's another attitude. It says, we, under no condition do we criticize such a person or argue, simply we tell him that we will never get over our thinking, um, drinking for them, until we've done our utmost to straighten out the past. We are there to sweep off our side of the street, realizing nothing worthwhile can be accomplished until we do so, never trying to tell him what he should do. His faults are not discussed. We stick to our own. If our manner is calm, frank, and open, we will be grat uh, gratified with the results. Now, I have to say, there, of course, there have been some tough amends. Um, there have been amends that took years to get to um, for different circumstances. And in my mind, I always feel like I look like a three-headed monster when I go, hi, I'd like to talk to you. And I feel like that's why it gets real weird. Oh, can I have five minutes of your time? I want to talk to you about something. Um, it's probably not true. It's just, it, of course, it's vulnerable. Of course, it's awkward. it feels awkward. But I had a relationship that was very, uh, a, a family member, uh, very deep in, in um, the illness. and. Uh, and I, I made a, an amend, and I was surprised that he listened, and he was so touched, and he actually apologized to me. I was not expecting that, that, you know, came to my home to say, I, I would like to apologize to you for these things. I went, whoa. Um, and this was a person that I didn't want to be around. <laughs> Um, I just didn't. Um, if you have that family member, you're like, oh my gosh, please don't make me be around them. Um, that was, yes. And today that is not the case. It's wonderful today. So that person, you're like, oh no, never again. It is possible. And it's lovely when it happens because things just melt away. So, and not always, they can, everything's a little different, but um, creditors, so um, it does, it says it right here, nine times out of ten, the unexpected happens. Sometimes the man we're, uh, sometimes the man we're calling upon admits his own fault. So, yeah, it does, it happens. So, but not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. Um I had one family member that I approached in the end, and this one was like, no, 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 stop, stop. I don't want to, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'd like to, no, 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 no. 
okay. Shut it down pretty. <laughs> um, and that's okay, too. Um, so you never know how things are going to turn out. That's what I'm saying. Um, so you're, uh, so fuse of years standing melt away in an hour and rarely do we fail to make satisfactory, uh, rarely do we fail to make satisfactory progress. Um, you might feel goofy, um, but, um, the, the results of it are so, it, that it, it's going into it where you might feel that or you may not. Um, not everybody, um, but that, that's probably an indicator of my ego. So, um, the level of awkwardness. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, we've made our demonstration, uh, done our part. It's water under the dam. So most alcoholics owe money. Um, so we're not, af- uh, they tell us that we're not afraid to disclose our, our, um, you know, the alcoholism on the theory it may have caused financial farm, harm. Um, we must lose our fear of creditors no matter how far we have to go. For we're liable to, to drink if we are afraid to face them. So that's the thing is we face them. We face them. That's part of um, – the point is – you know, not necessarily that, let's say you owe a lot of people money. The point is that, oh, you have to have that and pay them back. No, it's, the point is facing them and saying, my intention is this. Even if it's a dollar a month, my intention is to pay you back in full. Why? Because that's the right thing to do. And we're living on a different basis. Basis of trusting and relying on God. So criminal offense, uh, perhaps we've committed a criminal offense, which might land us in jail. If it were known to the authorities, we may be short in our accounts and unable to make good. We may have already admitted this in uh, confidence to another person, but we are sure we would be imprisoned or lose a job if it were known. Maybe it's only a petty offense, such as padding the expense account. Most of us have done that sort of thing. Maybe we are divorced and have remarried but have haven't kept up on the alimony to number one she's indignant about it um has a warrant out for our arrest so although the reparations take innumerable forms there are some general principles which we find guiding or reminding ourselves that, that we have decided to go to any length to find a spiritual experience we ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing no matter what the personal consequences may be That's a really wonderful place to be. And it's not that you do it, it's the attitude, because a lot of times it's not the best thing to do, especially if you have a dependence. Um, We're not encouraging people to not do the right thing. Uh, These are things that you want to talk to your sponsor about. But we we must be willing. we may lose our position, our reputation, or fight, uh, face jail, but we're willing. We have to be. Uh, we must not shrink in anything. But go, go over it with your sponsor because you may be su- surprised um, what you come up with. So we don't do the living amend thing. Living amends is us what we do in our daily 10, 11, and 12. This is actually approaching people we harmed. Usually, other people are involved. Therefore, we are not to be hasty and foolish martyr who would needlessly sacrifice others to save himself from the alcoholic pit. So that's um, what we mean when others are involved. Um, let's see. We also, uh, the, the, one, the man who owed his ex-wife, so before taking drastic action, which might implicate other people, we secure their consent. So you can't, we don't get to throw other people under. So uh, that is the um, fourth type of amend. Um, then it goes into adultery. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, that was the rival. Um, okay. So. A man so often 
feels very remorseful at times, page 81, especially if he's married to a loyal and gorgeous girl who literally has gone through hell with them. Um, it says that um, the chances are, and I'm going back to 80, the chances are we had domestic troubles, perhaps we we're mixed up with women in a fashion we wouldn't have cared to advertise. We doubt if, in this respect, alcoholics are fundamentally, fundamentally much worse than other people. But drinking does complicate sex relations at home. Um, so it, they do say here, whatever the situation, we, we we usually have to do something about it. If we are not sure, our wife um, does not know, should we tell her? Not always, we think. If she knows in a general way that we have been wild, should we tell her in detail? Undoubtedly, we should admit our fault. She may insist on knowing all the particulars, and she will want to know who the woman is, where she is. So we feel we ought to say to her that we have no right to involve another person. We are sorry for what we have done. God willing, it shall not be repeated. More than that, we cannot do. We have no right to go further. Though there may be justifiable exceptions, and though we wish to lay down no sort of rule, we often found this the best course to take, which is you admit your fault, but we don't go on and on about it. And um, there are times, and again, talk to your sponsor. It may not be the best thing to talk to um, to disclose those details, especially if it's going to hurt people. Okay. Um, the last one here, and I know I need to close up. Um, what was the other one? Oh, um, people that we that cannot be met. Um, some people cannot be seen. We send them an honest letter. That means dead people. There's some wrongs that we see. That's a page 83. There's some wrongs we never fully write. We don't worry about them if we can honestly say to ourselves that we would write them if we could. So some people cannot be seen, and we send them an honest letter. So um, if these people are living, give them a year. And, you know, uh, if they're not living, um, uh, a letter is good. Um, I've had people go to cemeteries, write a letter, and talk to their loved one for that amend they need to make. Okay. Um, Let's close up here. So seventh tradition, um, every group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. This group does not have a payment structure in place and currently requires no overhead expenses. If you'd like to fulfill seventh tradition, please direct contributions to the Al-Anon World Service by visiting al For questions about the, this meeting or if you're looking for a sponsor, please uh, send emails to al Recovery at gmail.com. Recordings can be accessed on YouTube by searching at Alan on Step Speaker in the YouTube search box. That's so cool. If you're interested in other Alan on meetings that follow the Big Book, please visit Alan on Big Book Solution Group org. And this is from um, from the Big Book, page 164. It tells us that our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little. God will constantly disclose more to you and to us. Ask them in your morning meditation what you do each day for the man who's still sick. The answers will come if your own house is in order. But you obviously cannot transmit something you haven't got. See to it that your relationship with him is right and great events will come to pass for you and countless others. This is a great fact for us. Abandon yourself to God as you understand God. And that your faults to him and your fellows. Clear away the wreckage of your past. Give freely what you find and join us. We shall be with you in the fellowship of the Spirit and you will surely meet some of us as you judge the road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you until then. So let's have a moment of silence for al who still suffers, and we'll follow that with the Lord's Prayer or a prayer of your own choosing then in silence. Who loves us and keeps us sane? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day earth our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I'm going to...
turn this off. Oops. Oh, I need 